So these books are all about terror, and Gamash has known terror in his life. But once it blows itself out and settles down, and that howl settles down, what was left for him was goodness. He knows that goodness exists, and he sees it in other people. I don't want to make him sound too, too new age, but he is genuinely in touch, takes great courage to be happy, to see the goodness. And Gamash owns all that sorrow and loss, and he recognizes it in himself, but he recognizes it in other people. He's an explorer. He goes into territory other people are afraid to go into. This is emotional and psychic territory. And where other people pause and turn back, because we're most afraid of, we're not afraid of the big monster under the bed, we're afraid of the monster inside our own heads. He continues on, he has the courage to continue on. There is something intentionally um, idyllic about Three Pines. There is a sense of magical realism. In some of the books I describe it as being somewhat like Narnia or like Brigadoon that, that that appears, for the most part, only to people lost. That people come across Three Pines most of the time by mistake. I decided to people it with, with villagers I would choose as friends. And there's a bookstore, and there are artists, and there's an embittered old poet. A murder in a tiny little village is catastrophic. It's a massive invasion of these people. You know, I, I heard someone, too, describe the Many of my, my mysteries are, are fairly hermetic in that there's a kind of a finite number of um, suspects and they all know each other. And how really dreadful and much more dreadful it is when you realize that there's someone around you, someone very close to you, who isn't who they appear. Gamash is, it is flawed and one of his flaws is that he genuinely believes that evil has its limits and it doesn't. And that's his big blind spot. And out of that blind spot, as you know from reading The Murder Stone and The Cruelest Month, terrible things can come.